Okay, Tov. Chodesh Tov. First day of Tammuz. Today's daf is daf Kuf Tesvav and Yivamis. We learn for a fourth line for Yosef Israel Ben Chani Chal and Elijah Ben Ruma, and for Ilu Nisham of my great grandmother Margula Basarab Yosef. So at the bottom of Kuf Yedal on the base yesterday, we were discussing the issue when a when a woman comes home and uh, she says that you know she went out with her, she went traveling with her husband and he died on the trip. So the Mishnah said that if there was a war time. We don't believe her because she doesn't really check it out. She just figured, well, he was shot up and he was in a bad zone. He must be dead. So we don't necessarily believe her in that case. The more, last line of the page said, What happens if we didn't know there was a war? She went overseas. There was peace here. She went overseas and she comes back and says, oh, there was a war zone and my husband died. So what do we say there? Do you say, listen, it's a migu. If she wanted to, she could have said, there was no war. She didn't have to say it was a war. She just comes back and reports that her husband's dead. We have a clow. That a woman is believed to say her husband died. He died in bed, even though there were no other witnesses there, because we figured that she'll check it carefully and because she doesn't want to wind up an adulteress. So um, we believe her. But over here, the question is not that she's lying or that she's attempting to lie. The question is she just doesn't figure it carefully. She said he was in a war zone. Uh, he was in Ukraine and they were bombing. So she figures he's dead. So. If we didn't know that there was a war in Ukraine, she came and told us there's a war, what do we say over there? If we know there's a war, we don't believe her. But if she's the one who's reporting the war to us, so what do you say? Do you say, Mali Yishakar, she could have said there was no war and then she would have been believed. Oh, Doma, keep in Mexico, I'm a bit of dummy. Over here, it's not a question of her lying. It's not a question she needs a migu. If she wanted to lie, she could have said a better lie. That's not the issue. The issue is we believe her that there's a war and believe her that she means well. We just don't think she checked carefully. So once she said that there's a war, and we know there's a war there, she figures for Lawsi, Mali Shaka, the Migu does not does not overpower the presumption that there was a war there. There was a war, and in the case of the war, she's not believed because we figure that she just does it by conjecture. She doesn't check carefully to see if he had a pulse left. So let's bring a proof. Let's see if when again, when she is the one who established the Chazaka, that there was a war, what do we say there? If we know there's a war, we don't believe her. But if she established it, maybe we believe her. Tashma. Ishino love bias, Ishino love bara. She says, listen, they tried to smoke us out. They lit a fire to our house, or they smoked, they put smoke around the cave that we were in. Uh, Humes, my husband died. Vanini Salti, I was able to escape. Uh, and she's not believed over there, said her husband died. So what do you see? Where well, she was the one who established that there was a war zone, there was a fire that they were doing that. When she was one who established, she's not believed because. Uh, once, once you know that there was a bad situation there, we assume that she just says bit of dummy. She just does it by conjecture. She didn't check it. Whereas, no, shiny hasam the umrla or the amrila. We tell her It could very well be that if she, even if if, if she established the war zone, she could be believed. The point over here, though, is that you say, listen, you say you escape. Well, how did you escape? If there was smoke and fire. You escaped by miracle, whatever. You were able to get out, so maybe your husband did too. You don't know for sure. You didn't see him dead. And therefore, that's why we don't believe her in that case. Uh, Rashi says um, that uh, she ran away and she didn't wait to see if he's dead. Uh, because of the, uh, what about the smoke? Well, just she was able to escape. Maybe he was also able to escape. Um, but in a case where she said there was a war, could very well be that she wouldn't have reported that he was dead unless she actually saw him. We're trying to say, was she reported a war? Does she believe it or not? Could very well be that she is believed, but over here, she says there was smoke and I ran away. So maybe your husband ran away too, and that's why she's not believed. Touch my another proof. We were, uh, we were befallen by Goyim or uh, highwaymen, robbers. Uh, they attacked us. Who makes my husband died in Itzalti and I was able to save myself. And then Mona, she's believed. Now, over here, there was peacetime, they were at peace between themselves. There was no war, but uh, there was a small war. They were attacked by uh, by bad people. And she, she was able to escape and he was not. So there you say she's believed. So what do you see? That where she established the war, she was one who told us there was a war. Otherwise we'd known there was a war. She is believed. And Mara says, no. It's not really a war for her. A woman, even though uh, when bad people come, when the guy come to, to attack them, the husbands are taken away, but a woman has her charms. A woman's not worried about dying. So therefore it could very well be that she stuck around. 
Why wouldn't she try to run away? No, because with her charm, she could keep them at bay. They're not going to kill the women. They'll kill the men and they'll keep the women. So therefore she would have stuck around and they would have, she wouldn't report that he was dead unless she actually saw him. She's not afraid. She didn't have to run away. Rashi says, She's not afraid of the uh, of the goyim. She's not afraid they're going to kill her, so she wouldn't have run away. So therefore, she would have stuck around, and therefore, her reporting could be truthful. Who gavra? The Bishilulale. There was a story of a man, a chassan. The end of the wedding, Isli Nura. A fire broke out. You know, they walked down with those little candles, and uh, some dropped the candle, and the whole chuppah went up in flames. So there was a fire broke out there, big at the at the uh, wedding. Amrulahu Divisus, the wife, screamed to everybody, Chazagavroy, Chazagavroy, look, look at my husband, my husband's on fire. Look, look, come and help us, help us. Also, uh, also they came, Chazagav, they saw Man Kurucha, the show, they, they saw a the charred remains of a human being on the ground. Upista the other show the and there was also a hand. Separately from the body, there was a separate hand, a detached hand next to the body. Just like we said before, she says, oh, listen, they let up a fire against us or a smoke. She's not believed over there. Why? Because we say, listen, you didn't wait to see if the body was there. Maybe he escaped. Just like you escaped, maybe he escaped. So we wanted the same thing over here and say that um, we don't know that this is really the charred remains of your husband. They didn't have like a DNA there over there. Maybe it was somebody else, maybe it was somebody else who came to save him and he got burned. Happens sometimes, right? The fireman gets killed and they save the uh, the person stuck in the fire. Omarava, me dummy, how can you compare it to that case, to the case of the fire? Hassam will come, I mean, the case where, the, where they, she reported that there was smoke, they tried to smoke him out. In that first case, she didn't say, look at my husband. Here, obviously, she said, she was complaining, look, my husband's on fire. They're, they're, my husband is stuck there. So here, it's more obvious that uh, that she's telling the truth and that he really did die. Well, we see a, that a charred person over here. other And there was a hand of a person next to him, maybe the hand of one of the rescuers. Uh, he didn't quite make it. So you can't compare it to that case. And therefore over here, she's believed because she says, look, my husband's on fire. Come, come and, and save him. And you find the charred remains of somebody. It's not like a case where she reported that he's dead. Maybe he escaped. Maybe he ran somewhere else. You know, we don't know where he is. Rav Chibar Avin, that's what happened in 9-11 also, that, they, that the people, even though they assumed nobody showed up, but they said maybe they went crazy. They wound up in some a mental hospital, you know, maybe people escape, but they don't. They didn't know at the beginning. It took many months, sometimes years, to determine uh, to actually find proof of death. Rafia Baravan, Rafia Baravan, who said, "Well, it's the same as the case of the fire when they said they she's they smoked this out, and she's not believed." Rafia Baravan, It could be that the charred remains there is the rescuer, not the person. Maybe they maybe it's a rescuer. Amina Shachrin also Latzule. The fire consumed him. What about the hand? So where's her husband? The It could be that the hand came from the fire, burnt up somebody's hand. The fire grabbed a hold of him and cut his hand off. Now this person, the chassan, is without a hand. He's got a permanent blemish. Because he was embarrassed, he ran away. You know, here is the wedding night. He's missing a hand. So we don't know what happened over there. And it's very possible this is somebody else. So we had a machlokas over here. Is this like the case of the, where she reported they, they smoked this out or they put smoke next to our cave and she's not believed because he could have escaped? Or do you say, no, this was, uh, uh, and, and therefore he's not believed? Or do you say, no, this is definitely, she is believed. And the fact that he's not here, maybe he was the one, maybe it's his hand. That's, uh, that's sitting here on the ground and the charred body is that of one of the rescuers. And therefore she would be believed to say that this is her husband and her husband is, is, uh, is uh, I mean, in the, in the, if you say she's not believed like the case of the, of the smoke, so you assume she's still married, but Rukhia Baravan who wanted to say that she's not believed but the other Shita was no, that uh, she said this is her husband and there's a dead body there so we presume that was her husband. Those are the two opinions of Rebailu. So this question is not really resolved. We had different opinions over here about, uh, so what happens if she's, she reports to us that there was a war and she says he's dead. Do we say that 
why would she lie? If she wanted to lie, she didn't have to say that there was a uh, war. Or do you say no? That um, once it's established that she that there's a that there was a war zone, she's not. It's not a question of her lying. We just assume that she wasn't careful, and therefore she's not believed even when she established a war zone. That seems to be the predominant opinion. We have a cloud that if one person comes and says that her husband's dead, even though normally you need to aid him, we believe him. Why? Because we say that generally she'll check it out, right? She'll check it out. What happens if one person comes and reports that he's dead in a war zone? We just said in a war zone, people aren't so careful, right? He probably died. There was a bomb. You know, nobody else escaped. What about over here, Eid Echad in a war zone? That's Igmar's question now. Time at the reason why Eid Echad is normally believed something that's going to be later exposed, he's not going to lie. Guy's not going to say he's dead and then uh, the guy's going to show up and he'll look like a liar. And that's why he's believed here. He's not going to lie. The reason why Eid Echad is believed is because the wife is also going to be careful to check it. She doesn't want to wind up an adulteress. The gear said in the side is uh, 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 but over here she won't check it carefully. Why dumber but dummy? She's going to say the same thing like the guy. He must be dead. He's probably dead. There was a war zone. They were in Maripol or some place like that where everybody's being killed. So because she's normally going to check it out, but here she won't check it out also because she assumed also that because of the war she won't check it, and therefore one eight is not believed. So that's the question. One eight who's normally believed. Just like a woman is believed to say that her husband's dead, we believe her. She doesn't want to mess herself up normally, unless there was a fight. We, Misha said, if there was a fight between them, we don't believe it. We'll talk about it later on. But if uh, there was no fight, she's believed. And one aid is normally, what about eight, one aid with a war? Maybe, again, we assume he's just uh, he's just conjecturing that he must be dead. And therefore, he's not believed. When I went to Nadal, when I went to Nadal, to, uh, to intercalate the year, show them there's an extra, you know, figure out this, if it's an every yard, they add an extra month. But Sassi Nechemia, each basically, in other words, Rabbi Kiva came from Eric's stroll because he, he had, was Musmach and he was allowed to do that. He said, I met, I met a man, Nechem Ish basically, Nechem Ish basically, Barmali, and he said, Shemati, I heard, Shem Asin Asish of Eretz Yisrael, Piedecha. I heard that in Eretz Yisrael, they do not marry off a woman based on the testimony of one, one aid who said that her husband died. They don't do that. El Rabbi Yudavim Baba. Yudavim was the only one who allowed that in Eretz Yisrael. Ben Amti Lo and I, Rabbi Kiva, told him, Canada from that's true. Rabbi Yudavim Baba is the only one in Eretz Yisrael who allows that. Amali, so this Nehemiah uh, Ish basically said, Amor Lehem, tell them in Eretz Yisrael, Mishmi in my name. Atam Yodim, you know, Hamdina Azu Meshubesh Spagaisis. You know, the country is riddled with troops. It's a tough time to get through. It's a war zone. Kach Mudan Mir Rabbi Yudavim Zakim, this is what I have have a tradition from Leo Zakan Shemasina Shishapiyeda. Tell them that they're wrong. They shouldn't listen to Rabbi Yudav and Baba, uh, uh, to the other rabbis who don't, don't agree to Rabbi and Baba, but rather they should follow Rabbi Yudav and Baba, the singular opinion that you could marry off a woman based on testimony of 1A. Now, what did he mean when he said that my Medina Meshubesh is Begaz? What do you mean that the country is riddled with troops? Even though this country is full of troops and others, is a war zone. So I have accepted, I have a tradition. You could marry off somebody based on testimony of 1-8, even though it's a war zone. So you see, it is believed even in a war zone. So why did he say this country is full of uh, troops? She said, wherever there's troops, even though there's troops, 1-8 is believed. That's what he means to say. Not even in a country where there's troops, still 1-8 is believed because he doesn't want to be exposed as a liar. Not, not in a country like the Elam Rav This is what this Nehemiah uh, Ish based Ali was trying to say. What he's saying is, you know that this country where I am now, Rabbi Kiva says he went down to Nardaw, so probably in Bubba, you know that this area where I live is full of troops, below and I'm not able to leave. I can't leave my family. No, it's because of the war zone, I'm not able to travel. I'm not able to go from Babel to Eretz Israel and to report in front of the rabbis what I have heard from Gulliel Zakhan. But please go back and report at Yerba Kiva you're visiting. Go back and tell them that I have a tradition from Gulliel, that you can marry off a woman based on, but not in a war zone. 
He's talking about Stam. You can marry off a woman based on testimony of one of which we know already. If one aide says that the, that the husband died, we assume he's telling the truth, either because he doesn't want to be turned out to be a liar or because the woman checks it out. But in a case where there's a war zone, where he might be saying, he might uh, be uh, report the death by conjecture without really knowing, and the woman might do the same, maybe then he, he wouldn't be believed. Touch my another story. They were traveling with Abi Yosef and Samari in a, ra- in a boat, the Tava, and they drowned. I guess the boat overturned. doesn't say what happened to Yosef and Samari, but some of the people there survived. And um, the, the boat sank, and they, they, they died. They, they disappeared. They, they, they sank, right? And um, they drowned. The Hasi Rebbe is saying, Rebbe married off their wives. Married off their wives. Alpi Nashim, based on the testimony of women who were on the boat. Now, women normally aren't believed. Well, water is like a war, right? <laughs> it's a dangerous place. People can die. Even if there's 100 women reporting this incident, they're only like 1A. And they said, you did marry them off. So you see, you can marry off somebody based on the testimony of 1A, even in a war zone. <coughs> so it's more of a Tisbara. Mayim Shendam Sofnenu. They were traveling on the high seas, on the Mediterranean, wherever they were traveling on the high seas. That's called Maim Shem himself. Maim Shem himself means it's not a lake where you could see, you're in the water, you could see all the edges all the way around. You look all the, in all four directions, you can see the end. You see the end that a guy drowns there, you assume he didn't come up on, he didn't uh, reach the shore, so you assume he's dead. But if somebody drowns in the Atlantic or in a big ocean where you can't see the end, you know, that's when you say, I saw him go down. Maybe he came up somewhere else. Maybe he swam three miles beyond the horizon and, and he got to dry land there. That's called Maim Shem Lem Sof. You can't see the end. And Maim Shem Lem Sof, you know, Maim Shem Lem Sof, Ishtu Asura. If Maim Shem Sof, even if you have regular Adam, two Adams said, we saw the guy drown. They went down with the uh, Titanic, right? We saw them go down with the Titanic. You don't know. Maybe they grabbed onto another iceberg and uh, they were able to uh, save themselves and uh, eventually they reached dry land. So, even if there were eight of so how do you say over here, it's these two guys, they married off their wives and they drowned based on the testimony of Amri come on, what happened was this. They, were, they came up for a while. In other words, they drowned. Their bodies floated to the top for a while. And then they identified them by distinguishing marks on their body. They had, you know, scars or whatever. The Chazin of Al Zunisam right away. The Kamri Simonim, and they said the Simonim, the distinguishing marks, which proved it was them. The Lava lies, we're not relying, the Lava lies, we're not relying on the testimony of the women or of anybody over there, but rather Allah as Simonim. They're relying on the testimony of Simonim. And I was assuming they're not lying about that. There's over there, it's not speaking that the women testified that they were dead. Maybe he went out. They said the Simonim, the Lava, the Elav, it wouldn't be for the Simonim. If it wouldn't be for Simon, why say, well, we saw the bodies rise up and they look because once a body is in the water, it gets bloated and the and normally you can't identify them anymore because the body doesn't look like it. When the body is bloated from the water, it doesn't look like it looked while the guy was alive. So it's only because of these strong distinguishing marks. The guy had a specific scar in this spot or, or he had a tattoo or something of that sort. Um, and, and that's why they were believed over. So therefore, in this case, they were believed not because of the testimony, not of one aid, or not even of two kosher aid, aid it wouldn't be believed because that, they're believed because of the Simon. Ha'ugav, a story, the afkid shum shmi gavi chavrei. Ruvain gave his, um, uh, his uh, a, a sack full, let's say, of sesame to Shimon to guard for him. You guard it for me. Amalei, havli shum shmi. Ruvain came and said, where's my sesame? Amalei, she explained, you took it already. You forgot, you came the other day and you took it. But what do you mean? There was, this was the amount I gave you exactly one kilo's worth of a and they were sitting in this barrel and the barrel's right here. These are my sesame. No, 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 you took yours. These are other ones. I used the same barrel for other sesame, my own sesame. So Rav Chisla want to say this is the same as Tamir Chavim. Amrin and Hanach we don't say these are the same ones. Um, we don't say that they're, these aren't the same as me. We don't say, no, that the uh, Shimon is, is telling the truth and that uh, these are gone and these are other sesame, but rather 
just like the Tuna Chum, they identified them. Here also, you assume based on their first testimony, they identified them, and that's the same ones. In other words, just like we said in the case of the Tuna Chum who died, we accept their first uh, um, testimony that these are them. The same thing over here. If uh, Ruvain left his sesame in, in this pot, this exact amount, one kilo in this barrel, and there's one kilo in the barrel, we assume that that's the truth. And Shimon can't say these are the ones. I'm like, Rav Amidam, how can you compare to the case of the two guys who, who uh, drowned? Hussam, come here, Simonim, there they gave Simonim. They gave Simonim. We said, you know what this guy looked like? This guy had uh, six toes, and this guy had uh, a scar on his head. And this guy had a tattoo. He had real Simonim, real, uh, real, real uh, distinguishing marks. Uh, what kind of single mark does the sesame have? They all, all sesame looks the same, right? You go, you go and you ask for a kilo of sesame, they all look the same. Udukamer came to Canada. I said, yeah, but he 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 knew exactly how many there was. It was exactly a kilo. So uh, he guessed the right amount. You know, usually it's sold by the kilo. So he said there's a kilo. That's not much of a proof. So therefore, Rava said that uh, Shimon can argue, yes, these are not the same sesame. You picked up yours the other day, and these are other ones. So this is the discussion they had. Amalei Mar Kashisha Baruch Hislavashi. So we've had several questions today. Number one, if she established that there's a war zone, is she believed or not? We really, Gemara really was not posh at that. Then we asked the question, what about Eid Echad in a war zone? Is he believed or not? Do you say, because he's afraid of being exposed to selling truth, or do you say no? It's only believed because he checks it, and she checks it, but over here she doesn't check it. So he couldn't prove a strong proof in either one of these cases. And you can't prove in the case of Timur Chacham because over there there was Simonim. <clears throat> and over here too, in this case with the sesame, you know, there's different opinions whether do you assume that it's the same ones or not. What are you saying over here? Abaya said, Rafista said, it just must be the same ones, the same sesame. Rabbi says, no. In the case of the Simon, the guys who died, there was a simon there. They knew exactly, you know, they identified these dead people by their distinguishing marks. But the sesame doesn't have any distinguishing marks. What are you going to say? The, they put him in that place. He admits that this is the place where they were, and he just guessed that it was the right amount of kilos, so it's no proof. But do we say that? So remember, Rafista had two sons, Makashisha and Marunuka, the older one and the younger one. Remember, Babas, the Zion Bates, so it's over there that there's another opinion. Makashisha is the younger son who was born to Rafista when Rafista was older. But whatever. Whatever the more is, he, there was Makashisha was the son of Rafista. So said Ravashi, are you concerned, Shemapina? Do we already do we do we allow for that consideration that maybe these were removed and other ones were put in their place? But tonight we learn Matzah Kli because of a love. Let's say you found a vessel, and in the vessel it says over there Kuf. There's a letter Kuf on the outside, and Mark. We assume carbon. Those that's Hegdish. That's Hegdish. That the stuff in there, the money in there, whatever's in there is Hegdish. If you find a man, you assume it's Ma'aseh. So you find a Dalit, you assume it's Damu, a mixture of Truma and. Uh, and uh, Tevel, and you can only get a uh, 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 Truman Chulin, it can only be eaten by a Kohen, Truman Chulin, it was already a Meiser. Uh, test, you find a test, that's Tevel, it's also for everybody. Tough, if you find a tough, that's Truma. Why, why the letters? Shabbat Shalom is a kind of when the Jews were not allowed to keep the Torah, or they had to do it secretly. They would write the tough instead of the, instead of in place of Truma, Kuf for carbon, as they use an abbreviation, uh, so that, uh, you know, because they weren't allowed to write Truma or Tevel or Meiser because the guy would go after them. Okay, so that's what uh, the Tanakhama says. If you find it, you can assume it's there. You don't assume that it's something else, that they just use that clee with the simon on it and that was removed and you put other stuff in there. You assume that whatever's in there, if it's tough, it's trum. If it's kuf, it's a carbon. If it's mem, it's Meiser. If it's dollar, it's namur. If it's tes, it's Tevel. You're not concerned. Maybe it was removed and something else was put in its place. Even if it says truma, the whole word truma, and it's fooling. Just because you find a barrel that says on a truma doesn't mean that's still truma. Maybe they used it last year and now they put fooling in there. Shani Omer, I say, because I could say, Eshtakad last year, having Molly truma was full of truma, and they removed it. And now it's used for chulin. So you could see the opposite opinion. So what's going on over here? Do you assume something was removed or not? You are concerned maybe it was removed. You are concerned maybe it was removed. And therefore, in the case of the sesame, yeah, maybe that was taken out. And there's other sesame here now. What's the machlokas over here by the kuf and the tuf and all the bachamot and the marsover? If they would have removed it, he would have wiped it off. Chapar means like 
kapora to wipe off the sins. He would have wiped off the tess or the kuf or the mem. And as once they stopped using it, you remove it. If you have a bag and it says on it uh, sugar, and you took out the sugar and you put salt in there, you take off the word sugar and you write salt or you put nothing on there, would have wiped it off. And since they didn't, you assume it's still, it's still what, whatever's written on there is what's inside. Bidach, the other one says, no, I might have forgotten to remove the uh, letter on the outside. Inami, he left it for better set, for safeguarding, meaning he figured, listen, what's the best way to keep people from taking my, uh, my truma or my hag dish, I'll write, you know, or my regular food. It's really regular food. It's, it's chulen, but I write on it uh, kuf, uh, uh, a kuf for um, carbon so people won't touch it. You know, you write on it like, you know, you put some sign on it that people won't touch it. They, they, won't, uh, they won't bother with it. So, you know, you write on it uh, hag dish or you write on it, uh, you know, uh, if, you put, if you write something bad on it, you know, full of germs or something like this you or, touch. huh? Yeah, that won't that won't help. That won't help. You know, you know, it was the story with the yeshiva guys in the colo. You know, they the guy brought some milk in to have with his coffee every day at, the, at ten o'clock break. So what happened? So uh, every day they took his milk. You know, people stole his milk. So he wrote on it, "It's Oster Ligzol." You know, don't steal, don't touch this. It belongs to me. Didn't help. They took it. Finally, after a few days, he wrote on it, "Chol of Akum." <laughs> then they didn't touch it. <laughs> Stealing, you know, uh, you know, Xayla, that, that didn't keep them. But so hey, you wrote on it something. Maybe you left it after on there. So therefore, the fact that there's written a kuf on it or or a tough on it does not mean that it's a, that it's a kadosh and it's a carbon, it's a hegdish, or that it's truma. Maybe you just left it on there. For, first, he could have forgotten the he left the sign on there, left the letter on there, or because he definitely wanted people not to touch it. Another story like is Yitzhak Reish Galusa, that was his name. Yitzhak, he was the Reish Galusa, the, the Exilarch, or he went by that name. Bar Achsid or Bibi Maybe it was from the family of the Reish Galusa. Anyway, this fella, Isaac Reish Galusa, he was the nephew of Rabbi Bibi also me Cordoba last He went from Cordoba to Spain or to some other place in Spain. Um, anyway, he from Cordoba to Spain. The Shachim, and he died there. Shachim house, and they sent a note from there. Yitzhak Reish Galusa, this fella, Bar Achsid or Bibi, the nephew of Rabbi Bibi, Havikazel was going from court to the last. Mami Vashachim, he died in root. Micha Shino Trey Yitzchak Olo. Well, you don't know that there's two people by that name. See, it's more complicated where there's a Chazaka. In the city where you know that uh, Yitzchak ben Avram gave a get to Leah, and uh, you know that there's two Yitzchak ben Avrams in the city, that's a problem because maybe it's the wrong, uh, maybe it's the wrong Yitzchak. But well, you don't know that. Are you worried? Are you concerned? Maybe there are two Tritzis or not. In other words, can you assume that this Yitzhak is dead and his wife can remarry or not? You are worried. Maybe there's another one. And therefore, you can't, she can't get married based on that. Rashi says it's speaking about where the woman is standing, uh, where, where you know, the woman is, is uh, you know, th that's our concern. That woman, is he dead or not? We know, who his, we know who his wife is, but maybe there's another Yitzhak by that same name, Yitzhak Yeresh uh, by the same name. And maybe his, this guy's wife is not really a widow. So Abayim Machashin, you are worried. Maybe this. Rav Amar Lachashin. Amar Amar Abayim. And I mean, how do I know that you have to be concerned? Even when you don't know, you have to be concerned. Maybe there's another guy by the same name. There was a get found in our door. The woman claiming that it was hers. Aisha met us with the bus. She says that's my that's my divorce. I was given that divorce by two Adam, and they left. You know, my husband said this is my divorce. They found this divorce. Exhibit it says. Exhibit it says in the get. It's not Klonia at the side of this place, near the city of Klonia, Masa, by that city, Ana, Ma, I, he writes on an I, Andrew Lenoy, or the gears on the side is uh, David, Barnaloy, whatever his name was, Nardaw, from Nardaw, Patris, I released Patarchus and I divorced my wife, yes, point is this woman, Ansasi, my wife, the Shalcha Avur, Shmuel's father sent this Shiloh, the Kamei, to Rabbi Yudanasi, before Rabbi Rebbe, and he says, check the whole city. Check the whole city. Maybe there's another one. So Bai says, you see from over here, and they just wrote Yitzchak, uh, Yitzchak, uh, Reish Galusa, divorced his wife. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, you know, in the, the case of Yitzchak, Reish Galusa, the concern is that he died. Uh, or do, or we know that there was this thing, there was a report that he died. They show, uh, Adam said Yitzchak died. Okay, do we, are we concerned that there's another Yitzchak by the same name? So Bai says, you are concerned because we have the story with the get. The guy wrote again, he says, I so-and-so, David Bar Nalai, I divorced my wife, and Abu uh, I'm from Nardaw, 
And uh, Shmuel's father sent a note to Rabbi Yehuda, what do we do in a case like this? And Rebbe answered, check the whole city. So you see over here, you have to be concerned. Even if you don't know that there's somebody by that name, a second person, you have to be concerned about it. Rabbi or no, in the Isa, if that would be the case, you have to be concerned about, maybe there's another guy by the same city. You better call him, call him, you check the whole world. Check all the Jewish records around the world. Check all 14 million Jews and see if there's another Jew by the same name. The fact that you, you check the city, maybe the guy who wrote the get and left. He just said the Rebbe sent an answer. Okay, check everybody just because of the covenant of, of Shmuel. Since our, uh, the father of Shmuel sent the Shaila, do we have to check? She says, okay, you should check just to make him feel that it was a good question, that he didn't ask something for no one. But there's no proof from that. So Rebbe says, Rebbe says, you can't prove him over there. You have to check. If you don't know that there is a, another person by that name, it's not necessary to check. So that's what Rabbi says. So Rabbi says, you're not concerned that maybe another one. If you don't know, there's no chazaka, you don't have to check. I'm Rabbi Minah Minah. Rabbi says, how do I know that you don't have to check? The Hanu Trey story, the Nafti Mechuzah, the two IOUs were found in the city of Mechuzah. Sibba, one says, Chavi Bar Nanoi. One says that the creditor is Chavi Bar Nanoi. Uh, the Nanoi Bar Chavai. And one said that the creditor is Nanoi Bar uh, Similar name, but two different stars. But Agvubu Rabba. Baravua Zuzi. Rabbi accepted these IOUs as valid and, and he, and he um, used, he allowed people, the creditors to collect the money, even though these were common names. Ba'achavi Bananoi, the Nananoi, Ba'achavai, those were common. There are a lot of people by that name in that city. So Rashi says, if you assume even that when you know, Ba'achavi, you're collecting Shemot, Shishtacha, Ba'achem. Ba'achem, you know, where maybe somebody else wrote it. Maybe, maybe it was a different guy by the same name and that, and and now somebody else took that star and is collecting with it. So Rashi says, Kivan, when it comes to money, even though there's a chazoka that there's many people by that name in the city, you're not worried about it. So Gabi Yisr, when it's a question of, is the husband dead? Or did he give her a divorce? Is this the guy who gave her a divorce? If there's no chazoka, also you shouldn't be chashin. Because when it comes to money matters, even when you know there's other people in the city by that same name, there's no concern. You're not worried about it. Uh, but by it, so Rabbi says, you see, you're not worried. So Rabbi says, here's a proof that you don't have to be concerned that there's somebody else by the same name. Because when it comes to money matters, even when you know that there's people by the same name, it's not a problem collecting with that IOU. You don't have to worry that somebody else by the same name uh, uh, took that star and is collecting with it. If somebody else with the same name as a creditor took that star and collected with it. So certainly in a case where uh, when it comes to Isser, like a get or, or a, uh, uh, the husband dead, is the a, is a, is a wife allowed to remarry? And there's no chazaka that somebody else by the same name. You don't have to be concerned about it. A bias is no. There it's different. Normally you are worried about this somebody by the same name. You have to worry. Maybe there's another guy by that name. And therefore, if they sent a note that this guy is dead, you have to make sure there's nobody else by the same name. But in this case with the IOUs, you know what? There's no concern. Lamai next, what are you concerned about? Even if you as are. When people have IOUs, it's like cash. Right? They're very careful. They don't just leave it around or make sure that if they lost it, it's very rare that they should lose it. So therefore you can assume that whoever has the IOU, even though there are many other people by the same name, many other people in the same name is the same name as this creditor in that town. But so what? People careful with their money. It's like cash. Even because are you concerned? I'll tell you what happened. Maybe this guy who had the same name, number one, had the same name as number two, number one is the creditor. Maybe he gave it the, the uh, star, the IOU to number two to hold for him. He said it with him. Would a guy do that with the same name? You're not going to take a chance like that. Keep him the Shmei, the Shmei have the same name. Well, I'm not, good, but I'm not going to put it with somebody who's got the same name as me. So you don't have to be concerned that he gave it to him for a because. You don't have to be concerned that, that he lost it because people, it's like cash. People are careful with their money. Mayim, what are you going to say? Dilma Mosele. Maybe he gave it to him. Maybe he said, listen, you know what? This guy owes me hundred bucks. You have the same name as me. I'll tell you what, I'll sell you the star for $90. You know, I'll sell it to you for less so you can, you know, that uh, uh, you give me $90 now and you go collect $100 from him. Maybe that. So maybe he sold it to him, but he didn't really, the sale was not completed. OCO sneaked this from Masira. It's enough just to give him the star. You don't have to make a proper Kenyan, et cetera, et cetera, and, and, and write another star against it or pick it up with Masira. As soon as, or, or, or pick it up with Agba or make some other Kenyan. Or make a Kenyan uh, Khalipan, exchange this for that. You know, you, I'll give you the star, you give me your pen, that kind of a thing. No, as soon as he handed it over to him, that's good enough. So if the creditor, so we're saying over here, there's no reason to be concerned that the creditor who has the same name as many other people in the city, maybe he's not the real creditor. No, because number one, he wouldn't lose his star. It's an IOU, it's like cash. Number two, he wouldn't give it to somebody else by the same name. 
And number three, if he sold it to somebody else by the same name, well, just handing it over means he sold it. And therefore, if he gave it to the other guy, the guy is entitled to collect it. So there's no reason to be concerned that maybe there's foul play over here and the wrong guy will be collecting the money. But in the case, that's what advice is. But in the case of a death or a divorce, you do have to be concerned maybe it's somebody else by the same name. Okay, this topic will continue with tomorrow. It's Shem Chodesh Tov to everybody.